Title VI. Title VI is a provision that uh, allows, uh, we're getting back to the three areas of uh, federal compliance. Remember, everything has to be fair, open, and equitable. Uh, let me turn my camera on. OK, yeah, so the three uh, parts of. Um, of uh, federal law, federal compliance is fair, open and and equitable. Uh, we want to be fair in the process. We want to make sure that what we put out as a requirement for a job, for a solicitation, for anything that we're going to. Re oh, that we are um, being fair. We're not overly burdening the vendor or the employee to have certain requirements for a job that is not necessary. Uh, that is not expected of that position or that work or or that uh, or that yeah position or work the other thing we want to be is open we want to make it available to everyone we cannot um, partially advertise in a certain uh, legal organ and not in another or, uh, organ we want to make sure that all the information is uh, dispersed throughout the uh, transit service. Uh, we want to make sure that they're aware of it. Um, I have visited uh, cities, and, and this is very true. I've visited with cities where the public had no idea they had a transit service, and I can actually name the service, and that's because they never really made much of an effort to promote transit or to make it available or even known that it was a viable option. The other one is equitable, and the uh, a good example of equitable is that what you do to one side of the city or your service area, you provide on the other side. And a good example of that is actually MARTA. The one of the I, one of the situations I remember was MARTA. MARTA, fifteen years ago, got new new uh, trains. They got new trains for the rail service. However, when they got the new trains, they put them on the north south run of MARTA and omitted adding any to the east west connection. So someone filed a complaint that all the new prettier trains are running north and south and no one's running uh, none on the east west connection. So uh, that's a good example of being equitable. Whatever we do to one area or to one side of uh, the city or the service area that we are going to provide uh, throughout the entire operation. So that's what we're looking at. Some of the findings that we found in, in uh, Title VI, and again, this is coming from FTA, um, the language assistance uh, plan, that's the big one. That's the one that gets most people. If you're 5311 uh, recipient, sub-recipient, then what, what GDOT has put together is a thorough uh, package that you pretty much just have to endorse. You have to put in your name, put in the people in your organizations and basically rubber stamp it. However, there is an element of the LAP that you have to do on your own. And what that is, is looking at the population of your area and making sure that you account for all uh, people who speak uh, English less than proficient. Not who speak another language, everyone speaks, well, a lot of people speak another language, but less than proficient is the key term. So that has been a finding, that has been one of the uh, areas that in Title VI that caused most problems, most issue. Uh, and the complaint process uh, not implemented. Uh, oftentimes you'll see, you, you'll see a plan. Whenever you put together a document, it must reflect the work that you do. So you'll see often that uh, some of the processes or the procedures that you've, you've dictated or put in writing is not actually what you're doing. So that is one of the things we will want to look at. Oh, Title VI program not 
submitted at all. That's another one. But it, again, if you're a 5311 recipient, we have that and you and you should have a program in place. Uh, sufficient oversight. Yeah, these are more 5307 and state uh, options. Uh, the, there's insufficient oversight of SEPA recipients, but we at GDOT try to adhere to that one and make sure that we're and the public participation plan. I, I it, it's good to have a, a solid uh, public participation plan and that it is uh, made available and uh, in a different language if it is determined that you have a threshold. If you if your service area is a community with either a thousand in the census data, a thousand persons or 5% of the population, then you will want to have a uh, LAP and that's the requirement for making an LAP plan. You have to first look at the census and determine um, what your threshold, whether or not you're part of the safe harbor. Uh, requirements, which means you must provide those issues. So 1000 people or 5% or of your service area population speaking another language, speaking English less than uh, proficient, less than that's the key term. Uh, yeah, most of the findings related to the Title VI plan uh, is again the uh, language uh, assistance plan, uh, making sure that if you have to have a, a another language that you are making uh, most efforts to provide uh, vital information. And that's another key word they use, vital. And uh, I've always viewed it that if it's an internal document going from uh, a director to a head, no, you would not need to make that uh, available to the public. So it would not have to be in another language. But however, if it is a announcement for a new route change or a service change or a fare increase, then you will want to put that in another language. Uh, Let's see, uh, complaint processes in accordance to the, I don't remember. Um, no. We want to make sure that the complaint process is, uh, is um, according to the Title VI program. I don't remember a, a specific uh, situation on this one, but we want to make sure that what we say we're going to do, we're going to do. And uh, the PPP public participation plan was not implemented and the public notice was not disseminated. Again, I talked about putting notices on the buses, on the facilities and. Uh, oh, no translation of a, a second language. And as I said earlier, it's most important that your Title VI plan is what you will actually do. So you can't write down something and do something totally different. Oh, wow. OK. Well, uh, this is my contact information. Um, please uh, reach out if you have any questions about these areas or any other areas. Uh, um, are there any questions? <laughs>